Hey, 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 what's up guys? So in this video, we'll talk about uh, how to forecast stock prices. If you have not subscribed to this channel, please do subscribe. We have daily videos about uh, investing, about uh, trading, about business opportunities and how to benefit from those. We also have videos about life hacks and insights. Alright, without further ado, how do you forecast stock prices? So this is an example of a spreadsheet with the year on it. So this, this is just a sample company. Uh, this is not uh, for real. Okay. So we have years here, 2016 to 2020. We have revenue. This is example. This is an example also. And uh, this is a given that you must have. Right? Sometimes the net income um, is secondary. You know, you'll find out later that... Uh, it's better to have the revenue first and this is our main uh, forecasting variable all right so revenues here uh, from the past uh, four years and then we have a trailing 12 months the meaning of trailing 12 months is so this is, we are we are in November now you have uh, your company's uh, first three quarters and since you must uh, have the trailing 12 months then you will add the fourth quarter of last year so this is from december of 2019 march of 2020 uh, june of 2020 and also september of 2020 we are doing that in order to make this the same length all right now the net income is also uh, the same so this means that uh, the numbers are given in millions so we have net income for 2016 at 654 million okay we just rounded out to the nearest uh, unit the shares is also given in millions the number of shares is also given in millions so this is 1 billion shares 1.04 billion shares and so on and we must have also the stock prices at the end of each year now, if you don't have this, of course, I'm trading through Call Financial. And Call Financial has this in their stock valuation. But if you don't have this, then you must have at least an average uh, price earnings or PE. Or just the last, the PE for the last year. Now, if you still don't have that, you can just choose the average of the price earnings. For example, in PSEI, we have more or less 15 to 18. And sometimes the price earnings go up to about 20 to 24, depending really on, on the economic situation of the earnings. During the financial crisis, it went down to as low as about 8 to 12. 8 to 12. Oh, sorry. 8 to 12 times. So these are uh, given PEs, and you can have them handy if you don't have the average PE of your company or if you don't have the stock price at the end of the year. Now, if you don't have PE average, you don't want to use this uh, the average PE, then you can just rely on the current PE if you want. Current PE to date so that you will have a similar uh, basis. So for example, the current PE of this stock is about 16 times, for example. Then you can assume that what if the current condition is also the same and we are trading at 16 times PE. So yes, so what do we do? We forecast for the revenue and there are many ways to do it. Now, of course, the uh, the usual way is through linear regression or we are assuming that this falls on, on a line. And of course, there are many weaknesses in that model. This assumes that uh, it continues to go on a straight line and if it is increasing it continues to increase if it is decreasing it continues to decrease so it is really something that's weak of course you can make use of the POM and QM we have a lot of forecasting tools there we can also use uh, average uh, rate of increase uh, on a yearly basis so annual rate of increase and uh, we have videos also we have a video that talks about that uh, but for this video, let's just assume that uh, we will use uh, linear regression. Okay, so pick a year in the future. So, for example, to 2025. 20, this means that you bought this stock today and you want to uh, 
uh, holding for the next five years. So if we, what will happen in 2025? So we have forecast, forecast of the X, which is 2025. Remember, X is usually the year for the independent variable. Comma, we have known Ys. The known Ys are the dependent variable. Comma, then the known X go up. And then close. So that means that uh, we are forecasting that in 2025, the income will be 5 billion 730. Of course, the way things look, it's not going to be that uh, small. Uh, after the pandemic, then uh, we know that, well, we hope that the income or the revenue will go back to the normal levels. But this is very conservative. So if we have this forecasted value of revenue, then you also need to forecast uh, net income. If you don't have the values of the net income, and if you will look at this, look at the net income, uh, the net income decreased because uh, the line that was given is a decreasing line. And maybe you will not believe this, and it is really hard to accept that the higher the revenue, your revenue is rising up while your net income is decreasing. All right? So if you have data like this and you really don't believe in your forecast, then what you can do is uh, compute for the net profit mar margin. Net profit margin is the ratio of the net income to the revenue. And let's compute that. Uh, for the past five years, or how many years do we have? Okay, so we have here the average, and uh, the average of the past five years will be, so the average is 9.08%. So if that is the case, then you will just multiply uh, the revenue by 9.08% and you will have 520 which will be now your forecasted this is now your forecasted net income okay uh, 5.7 billion is your forecasted revenue so we have forecasted revenue and forecasted net income based on the net profit margin now another thing that you have to also forecast is the growth on the number of shares now this is really beyond us depends really on the company how many shares it wish to issue right but uh, let's say that you are forecasting the growth also of the number of shares uh, based on the past data now again if you don't have this then you will just assume that the current number of shares will be the same in the next five years what is uh, being shown here is the forecasted number of shares in 2025. Is it hard to accept that in the next five years the number of shares will increase by 300 million? I don't know. Maybe it's too high. But remember that in 2016 the number of shares was only 1 billion, 1 billion and it was uh, raised to 1.2 billion. So in this, uh, if this trend continues according to the linear regression, it will go as high as 1.5 billion shares okay so we have all this as your forecasted uh, value this is not forecasted 9.08 percent is the average net profit margin what will your stock price be in 2025 or at least the end of 2025 so given this uh, if you look at the revenue the revenue versus the stock price what you will have is what we call the price over sales or price over revenue or P over S. Okay, the P over S is the price, the stock price, uh, stock price times the number of shares, okay, that's the market value divided by the revenue. So okay, we will have 1.8 times price sales. Now, sometimes this is given also. Uh, Bloomberg is, it is uh, given, or financial is also given. So what will you do with this? You will get the average um, average price sales. Uh, you see that the average price sales is 2.27. So what does that tell you? If this is your average price sales, then you have your sales, then you can compute for the price. So how do you do that? So we have uh, 
and the value is 2.274 okay the price is unknown and the sales is 5730.3 okay let's just have it here okay so how do you compute versus for the price you just cross multiply okay so x will be 2.27 times 5730 okay so the price will now be 2.27 multiplied by 5730 remember this is the market value of the price of the company and we don't have yet the the price this is just the market value and to compute for the price the stock price you will just divide this by the number of shares which in our um, in our forecast will be it will be at 1.5 billion shares so now we will have the forecasted stock price based on price to sales like 8.67 currently it's at 12.5 so this only means that given this we are even projecting that the stock price based on the price of sales will eventually go down now of course uh, this is uh, largely due to the uh, sudden dip of uh, revenue because of the pandemic but again we are just being uh, being very conservative now we have another way of doing it and this is now using the price earnings the price earnings the price earnings would be the price divided by the earnings the earnings multiplied by uh, income divided by okay. so this is the average price earnings the average price earnings is not really 13.55 but 28 times because of the very high price earnings multiple of 2020 sorry about that letter i letter i not the h yeah so based on eps it will be 10 pesos which is not really far away from the 13 1250 that we have now now if we don't assume that uh, Uh, the number of shares will go up to 1.5 which remains at 1.2 then we will just divide it by 1.2 and we will see that uh, based on EPS and price earnings our forecasted price will be at 12.53 uh, some companies also have uh, this high of a price earnings because of the pandemic and some even turn out to be negative because of some you know some companies post a loss uh for 2020 so the good thing about basing your forecast on the revenue not the net income sometimes the loss would uh, complicate things like for example if i put here negative 234 look at the forecast of the revenue of the net income it becomes negative 660 the net price net profit margin uh, goes down to 6.93 percent eps is of course negative 0.195 uh, uh, yes, and this will be negative 64.10. Okay, so 64.10 is negative, there, that's why your price earnings become uh, negative, uh, very small. Right? So, if you do that, then the price to sales is okay, the price to sales will be okay, but the price based on EPS will be very. Uh, well, it's, it will be so affected. Uh, of course, this is now 3.25 times. It's not the same as uh, the one that we had before. Right? So, based on EPS and price earnings, your projection will be 1.78, which is really uh, punishing for the company. Uh, you cannot, well, you can, but uh, you should not. You should not punish your forecast. Uh, punish the company for such a forecast just because of one last year of course this one last year is 2020 which is really uh, punishing here 
So really, it depends upon you as a forecasting person. If you want to do a conservative forecast or you want to create a more realistic forecast or an aggressive forecast. Depends really. As I said, some people would just remove 2020 in the equation because it is really an outlier. Maybe you can do that. Uh, depends really on you. All right, so that's it. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video.